event, we now join our regularly scheduled program already in progress. And Whitey, the first time these teams met this year, fouls were a big problem for Seton Hall. You know, Seton Hall goes pretty deep. They can go eight or nine, maybe even ten players deep. And it's obvious that PJ's talking about going down on Brian Shorter once he gets the ball. Joe Green has to be careful because Sean Miller can really shoot the three. Miller missing the three out of bounds. Pittsburgh will keep possession. First meeting, Gaze, Ramos, Morton all fouled out. There's Ramon Ramos, comes off that 9 for 10 shooting performance against UConn. Shorter. Matthews penetrating on Morton. Rebound, Shorter. Puts it in. And we're tied at two. Brian Shorter, two time uh, rookie newcomer of the week, they call him. The Big East Conference really can play. Morton to Andrew Gaines. Gaines has become much more of an offensive force over the past 11 ball games. He's been a double figures 11 straight times. Gaze looks inside to Ramos. Puts it up with the left hand and connects. And it's 4-2 Pirates. Yeah, Bruce, a lot of people say that Ramos played in Brian's shadow last year. Ramos was a pretty darn good player last season, too. This year, he's just as a real power player inside. There's no one really standing next to him. Sean Miller, Jason Matthews thinking about the three. Good defense by Mort. Here's Darrell Porter. Martin on the baseline. Foul called on Ramos. It's a hold. And that is the third team foul in Seton Hall. We played only two minutes and 43 seconds. I thought Ramon might have given him a little hand check right here, right there, before they called the foul on the grab there. Looks like it should have been a two-shot foul when he finally called it. They're going to give him the ball. They call the common foul. Ball out of bounds. Porter will trigger in. Shorter. Matthews for three. Foul called. It's going to be Martin over the top of Andrew Gaze. And that's the first team foul on the Panthers. John Morton so far doing a real good job on Jason Matthews. Morton, to me, is one of the most underrated defenders in this league. You know, people talk about Eric Murdoch and Carlton Screen and Gary Massey for going over. Uh, but I think Morton can really shut down any other guard in the league when he really plays hard. Morton on the offensive end. Ramos fighting for the rebound. Miller over there. Porter comes up with the ball. Three on two. Miller outside Matthews for three. He hits. Five, four, Panthers. Darrell Walker. And Porter runs it down, and the Panthers look to push it. Sean Miller to Jason Matthews. He's really looking for that three. Miller, he hits back-to-back -back three point field goals by the Panthers. That kind of shooting is not going to bother Seton Hall. They're such an experienced team, a well-drilled team. The game's not over till it's over. We haven't had against UConn. UConn had a great opportunity to win. But Seton Hall took it to him right at the end. Here's John Morton penetrating. Stripped away by Matthews. Miller with Porter. Shorter fills the lane and lays it in. And Pitt on an 8-0 run takes a 10-4 lead. That's like one of those situations where you see the guy fumble the kickoff. They end up just still taking it in for a touchdown. Sean Miller kicked the ball halfway up the court. The crowd is into it early at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Gaze to Ramos. That'll quiet the crowd momentarily. Momentarily. 15.40 to go. First half of play. Pittsburgh 10. Seton Hall 6. Porter. Penetrates. Shorter with the flip shot. Now he's patented that shot this year. When you have Miller and Matthews making the threes, it really opens things up for Brian Shorter inside, who commits the foul. Shorter held Darrell Walker, his first personal second team foul on Pitt. Now we have a timeout on the court. The Panthers have come out smoking, and they lead the Seton Hall Pirates by a score of 12 to 6. We'll be back. You may not see me in the sports pages, but I play for one of the world's largest teams, Days Inns, the fastest growing hotel chain in the world.
Our most valuable players are the 130 Days Inn owners right here in the Big East Conference. They'll give you a great room at a great price with restaurants, pools, lounges, even meeting rooms. When it comes to great prices and great locations, see why the professional traveler stays with us. Spirit at your Dodge dealer means searching for a new car won't give you the blues. The front-wheel drive Dodge Shadow has over 40 standard features, our 770 protection plan, and ES discount package savings of $700. After all, why should you get the blues when all you really want is a good value? The new Spirit of Dodge. Piedmont Airlines Going Places prices have a lot of people going to a lot of places. Going Places prices won't last long, so call Piedmont Airlines or your travel agent right away. On your mark, get set, go places. Pittsburgh off to the fast start and running the ball. Sean Miller, arguably one of the best dribblers in the country. Loses the handle here, but still had the presence of mind. Brian Schroeder can really run the floor. Easy hoop. Thus far, Pitt 5 for 10 from the field. Seton Hall 3 for 5, but Pittsburgh with two three-point buckets. Gerald Green to Andrew Gates. Both teams staying with the starting lineups. Morton on the penetration and a foul called on Jason Matthews and Morton will go to the line for two. Both teams have started out in straight man-to-man -man defense and basically matched up the, uh, at both ends the same way. Matthews is playing John Morton just like he's handling him on the other end. Morton will shoot two. Both teams, Bruce, can really shoot free throws. So if this game is real close at the end and, and the teams are fouling back and forth, we really could be here for a long time. John Morton currently 12th of the all-time seed golf scoring list, just two points behind his backcourt mate for several years, James Major. 83% from the free throw. I really helped him tonight. Well, he hit the second. So it's 12-7 Panthers. Seton Hall has now switched. Sean Miller is being played by Morton, and Gerald Green has moved over to play Matthews. Matthews. Outside Miller. Panthers averaging 81.1 points per ball game. Shorter inside. Misses. Martin is there. And a foul is called. It's on Gerald Green, who snuck underneath. Fourth team foul on Seton Hall. First personal on the general. Trying to come up with some real intelligent comment as to why uh, PJ would have switched defenders there. The only thing I can think of is that maybe he wants Morton to help down on Shorter more. And with his size, it's easy for him to run back out at Miller and put a hand in his face, as opposed to Gerald Green, who's a little bit shorter. Just putting a hand in his face might not be good enough because his arms are a little shorter. He can't get as close. Beyond that, I, I don't know. What it's do you a, think? It's a good guess. <laughs> I think uh, Carlesimo's been happiest with the defense of Green, so I think that he's going to put Green where he thinks that he can help the club the most. And right now, that means stopping the penetration of Sean Miller. But he switched him over to Matthews. Figure that one out. Yeah, that's confusing. <laughs> Green with the ball. John Morton. Morton backing in. Goes glass. Bobby Martin gets the rebound. Way up for that rebound. Beautiful jumper off the glass by Porter. Green. Oh, a beautiful feed to Gaze who lays it in. And Seton Hall, one of the most unselfish passing teams in the nation. And a very good interior passing team. 16-9 Pittsburgh. 13-40 to go first half of play. Shorter. Porter. Rebound Morton. Defensively, they switch back. They're back to what I said they should be doing. <laughs> so I'm going to stick to my guns while I let you handle the analysis. Ramos rejected by Martin. Ramos gets it back. Green for three. Got it. 
16 to 12, Pittsburgh. Gerald Green has really made himself into a good outside shooter. A year or so ago, people would have wanted him to take that shot if you're playing defense on him. This year, you have to play him. We got Green covering Miller and Morton on Matthews. Miller on the penetration. And a whistle, and he stepped on the baseline, out of bounds. Seton Hall ball. And Evans doesn't like the call. He thinks that a little bit of a push on the part of the Pirates. Selected hand check. Hand checking is something they talked about earlier today on TV, but it's something they're letting people get away with. Yeah, they let you get away with it in the NBA. Morton to Ramos. Backs in. He hits. Ramos this season shooting 57% from the field, and suddenly Seton Hall is within two. You will very rarely see Seton Hall get all disjointed. Even if they go down a little bit, they know they can come back. Seven in a row for the Pirates. Martin, tough shot. Rebound, Gaze. All blue underneath. Here's Green leading the Pirates in transition. Green to Darrell Walker. Good look to Ramos, knocked out of bounds by Darrell Porter, and Seton Hall will keep it. Again, Bruce, you talk about the, the unselfishness, the internal pass, and that time Darrell Walker was double teamed, dished the ball up to Ramos. Gaze will try again. Seton Hall with consecutive road wins over UConn by three and Villanova by six. Ramos spinning. Got it, and he loves to use the glass. Yeah, and we're tied at 16. And I don't think enough big people use the glass anymore. They're using the glass, if you get bumped, you still have a chance to make the shot. Most big people are, have stopped using the, the backboard. Johnny Wooden always wanted people to use it because it's better for offensive rebounding. Matthews, he knew a little something. Pittsburgh's cold. Seton Hall a chance to take the lead. They were down nine just moments ago. Gaze for three. He hits it. 19-16, Seton Hall, the Pirates have scored 12 unanswered points. Paul Evans has to be thinking about getting a timeout, but he's, he knows he's going to get a TV timeout. Next, next dead ball, I'm sure he's holding down. 11.31 to go in this first half of play. Martin, and a whistle, traveling call to Bobby Martin. And Anthony Avett set to report it for Seton Hall. Now the TV timeout. Seton Hall with a terrific run, and the Pirates lead it 19-16. Back after these local messages. Athletic shoes at Timmy. There's this dude from the west side they call the wizard who is amazing. Plays the middle at 6 4. Anything a seven footer can do, he can do better. When he leaps, he just keeps going up until all you see is the bottom of his rebox. One time, the wizard did the nastiest dunk I ever seen. Went up, hit the ball two times on the backboard, then slammed back. Now that takes tank time. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. Raron Ramos doing a job for Seton Hall thus far on the inside. Yeah, Pittsburgh's going to have to bang down. I see nobody goes after. Matthews has to sneak in there, just like we see Seton Hall doing on Brian Short at the other end. Ramos, Ramos puts the ball in the glass. Four for four thus far in this game. Eight points. And Pittsburgh started out shooting well. They've tailed off. Seton Hall has warmed up considerably. The Pirates on a 12-0 run. Gaze goes inside to Anthony Avent. Outside, Gaze for three, yes! Gaze with back-to-back three-pointers. He's shooting 41% from three-point land on the season. Avent in the ball game for Ramos. Seton all with their biggest lead, six. Matthews on the penetration, whistle before. And a foul called away from Matthews. No, they got Ma Matthews went up for the shot, but they called it on the floor on Avent. I think Jason Matthews has to take that shot. I don't think he needs to draw the foul in that situation. He's such a good shooter. Take the shot, make the two. Here's Rod Brooken checking in. He had 15 points in the first meeting between these two teams. He is perhaps the best sixth man in the conference. 
And but Evans looking for a lift. Larry Eldridge said he's really been playing well lately. Matthews connects from three-point land. And that silences that 15-point run by the Pirates. Loose ball underneath, out of bounds to Pittsburgh. That's a little bit out of character, I think, for the Pirates. Gerald Green doesn't just take the ball down much. So the Panthers now going with Miller, Brooken, Martin, Matthews, and Shorter. Here's Miller against Gerald Green. Coming up on 10-20 to go in the first half. Miller, inside shorter. Rebound Martin, and a foul call. It's on Avent, his second. And Seton Hall with 16 fouls, Pittsburgh with only three. Avent picked up two in about a, a minute. Again, immediately they attack the post. And Shorter in no position to get the offensive rebound. Avent has to box out Bobby Martin, but they did a good job checking off Brian Shorter. So Bobby Martin at the free throw line for two. Line drives the first one in. 6'9", sophomore from Atlantic City, New Jersey. High this year, 22 against Robert Morris. Two for two for the line. Panthers within one. It's been a game of streaks thus far, Whitey. Yeah, no, but we have a 15-0 run. That's really going to help you. Darrell Walker posting up, turns them shorter, drops it off to Avent, who puts it in. Darrell Walker, a very good internal passer. Matter of fact, I didn't even think he was that good a passer, but very unselfish, like you said. You can't double-team one of them because they'll find the open man. Seen all back up by three. Nick Katsikis gets sent to report in for the Pirates. He thinks we're the scorers team. Matthews inside to Martin. Here's Rod Brookett. Good defense right now by the Pirates. Foul called away from the ball, and Walker held up shorter. Yeah, I'd say that's a foul. <laughs> Darrell Walker, what you want to do is you want to always keep some kind of contact with your man. You, that time, you, I mean, when you just put your body to body for any length of time, they're going to call a personal. So substitutions now for the Pirates as Franz Volsi checks in and also Nick Katsikis. Seton Hall over the limit. Ryan Shorter at the free throw line for one and one. Katsikis replacing Morton. Now 9.30 to go in the first half. Pittsburgh Panthers will be shooting the rest of the way. That's two fouls now on Darrell Walker. Shorter connects in the first. Now Ramon Ramos is in replacing Anthony Avent, who also has two fouls. Well, P.J. Schoen is a luxury he has that Paul Evans does not have. I mean, he can really go into his bench, and the Pittsburgh Panthers just aren't that deep. There's no doubt about it. I asked Paul Evans this week, uh, had your club been inconsistent? He says, yes. I said, why? He said, when you only have six players to use, you need four of the five starters to play well on a given night to win. Well, sure, and foul trouble just could kill you. Gaze for three. Way off. Rebound Matthews. And the Panthers can take the lead. Good luck to Shorter who lays it in. Got to transist on defense. Pittsburgh and Seton Hall both will just run it down your throat. You have to get back. Pittsburgh back up by one. Ramos against Martin. Knocked away by Sean Miller. Here come the Panthers in transition. Matthews for three. He hits. Pittsburgh 28. Seton Hall 24. Jason Matthews knows where he is on the floor. He knows where that three-point line is as well as anybody. Gates on the baseline, and he's going to be called for steps. And now it's Pittsburgh that is smoking again. Seven in a row for the Panthers. P.J. rushes John Morton back in the game. He's his steadying influence. So Morton replaces Gaines. Can seek us a move up front. And since Rod Brooken came into the game, the whole tempo has quickened, and the Panthers have looked like a different team on offense. Yeah, Porter in the game now for Miller. Porter will handle the ball. Again, when you're playing Jason Matthews, you've be, you got to expect to be run off some picks because he really knows how to play without the ball. Miller gets a breather. He has seven assists already in the game, doing a dynamite job dishing off. Matthews missing. Rebound, Porter. He turns, blocked by Morton. 
One thing Pittsburgh has to be careful of with Daryl Porter on the point, somebody gets back on defense. He's not a true point guard. He might go to the glass. Seton Hall might pick up an easy one. Porter backing in on Gerald Green. And the ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Bobby Martin. So a timeout on the court. Pittsburgh down three. Now they're up by four. We'll be back after these local messages. Greg Gumbel. This week on Coca-Cola High School Sports Week, when you talk Tri-State High School hoops, none better to talk with than Tom Konchowski, editor of the High School Basketball Report. Is St. Anthony one of the best high school teams ever? We'll get his thoughts on that and on the class of 89. Look to us for High School Sports Thursdays at 7 here on the MSG Network. Memories are made on Madison Square Garden Network. Look to us for greatness. Turn things up a notch, and they're running effectively. And we also, we talked about banging down and, and attacking Ramon Ramos when he gets the ball, just like Seton Hall was doing. There you see three guys go on Ramos. Sean Miller picks the ball up. And then on the other end, Whitey, a three-pointer by Matthews. You see, he was about half an inch behind the three-point line. He knows where he is on the floor. As a sophomore, he plays like a senior. We'll be selecting the Plymouth player of the game at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network, part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East Basketball. Bruce Beck, Whitey Rigsby, Fitzgerald Fieldhouse at the University of Pittsburgh. Panthers lead it by four. Morton shot, loose underneath. Nick Katsikis runs it down for the Pirates. Again, Seton Hall not getting real good shots. Now, that wasn't a good shot by Morton. The one before by Ramos wasn't very well good. Katsikis for Ramos. He turns. Blocked by Shorter. Long lead for Brooklyn. And it's knocked away by Gerald Green. Oh, always had a nasty uh, bang up there. Seton Hall going with Green and Morton in the backcourt. Franz Volsi, Ramon Ramos, Nick Katsikis up front. Both teams still man to man. Morton drives. He's cold. Volsi with the offensive board. And there's the depth you were talking about. Sure, Volsi and Ava both really go on the boards. They have to be blocked out. Both teams shooting it well for three-point land thus far. I'm sure are. Under seven minutes to go. First half of play. Pittsburgh by a deuce. Brooking, twisting, turning, hitting. Brooklyn's first two, 30 to 26, Panthers. And a turnover against the ball. Gerald Green has to get the angle on that pass. You gotta break that 45 degree when you bounce that ball in like that. Otherwise the ball picks up speed and just, just runs away from you. Andrew Gaze is back in, Sean Miller back in. Matthews gets a breather for Pittsburgh. So Miller back at the point. I don't think P.J. is happy with the last couple of shots Morton has taken. Darrell Porter. So this game is physical. Ramos hustling. Out of bounds. Last touch by Ramon Ramos. So the Panthers will keep it. Good call by Tim Higgins. This is a very difficult game to officiate because it's so physical. You're playing at a, at a, a, a nasty kind of place where the crowd's going to be involved the whole game. And these officials so far have really done a bang-up job. How about that bang-up job for physical game? Absolutely. Good play on words, Whitey. Rebound pulled down by Volsi. Here's Gerald Green. Seaton all down by four. Good defense by Miller. Katsik is a three-point threat on the floor with Gaines. Both can shoot it for the three-point land. Yeah, but Katsik doesn't want to handle the ball a whole lot. Foul called away from the ball. And I believe it's going to be on Brooklyn who was pushing Gaze around. And Pete Pavia cites a foul on Rod Brooken. That is the fourth team foul on Pittsburgh. First personal on Brooken. Seems like I'm the only one here who thinks they're officially doing a very good job. 
<laughs> Paul Evans doesn't think so, so far. <laughs> now the coaches have a little more at stake here. For Pittsburgh, very important game in their quest to make the NCAA tournament. Of course, they've got the big W's thus far this year, but they know they need a lot of victories, and that's what they're shooting for. Brooklyn for three. Rebound to Rel Porter, nice speed. And the jam by Getsu, Brian Shorter. Well, that was a great pass by Porter. You know where he knows where everyone else on the floor is. Pittsburgh by six. Gaze to Volsi. Three for three. Rebound Shorter. Here's Terrell Porter with Miller and Martin. alley -oop to Martin, couldn't control him, but he gets the break anyway. Oh, I think they might have had some kind of call on that one because he lost the ball and grabbed the rim, and the ball ended up going in anyway. 34-26, and when things are going right, they go right. Talk about a game of streaks. Ramos with some trouble controlling it. Brooklyn drives. Rebound, Katsikis. Well, if that would have gone in, this house would have fallen down. I think Seton Hall needs Morton back in the ball game because they need to have someone else handle the ball, not just dribble, handle the ball. Seton Hall wants a timeout. Pittsburgh in the midst of a 13-2 run. The Panthers 34, the Pirates 26. I'm not going to sit here and tell you AT&T's long-distance rates are competitive. I'm going to prove it to you. If you're with another long-distance company and your business spends at least $120 a month, Call us about our discount calling plans, AT&T Pro Watts. If you qualify, here's the deal. We'll pay for the sign-up fee, the switch-over charge, and if within three months you're not completely satisfied with our quality, value, and price, we'll even pay to switch you back. So what have you got to lose? Even the call is free. 1-800-222-0400. Pick up the phone. Call us. Piedmont's first class. This may be the greatest comfort of all. Pittsburgh up 34 to 26 on a 13-2 run. Let's look at their defensive work, Whitey. They've done it with defense. We said earlier they have to attack the post. Boom. Sean Miller makes the big play. Unfortunately, Rod Brooken tried to make a miracle shot down the other end. He looked a little like Julius Irving there, didn't he? But missed the shot, but great defense at the other end by Sean Miller. Inside pass to Andrew Gaze. He turns, rejected by Martin, picked off by Miller. More defense. Pittsburgh running again. Miller, wide open, Brooklyn for three. He hits. The Panthers are smoking. They lead by 11. PJ has his entire starting team back on the floor to try to stem the tide here. Pittsburgh doing it first with defense. Sean Miller trying to prevent Joe Green from getting the ball back. Nine points in a row for the Panthers. Morton for three. Rebound Walker, pretty feet outside to Mort. Seton Hall can't buy a bucket right now. You gotta move, a little more offensive motion. Gerald Green calling a set play. Here's Walker to Gaze. Inside Ramos, he turns on Shorter, and he gets the roll. Big hoop right there. Big hoop to stem the tie here. Nice now it cuts the lead to nine. There's these people have been standing up the whole game. That's support. Miller dumps it inside, knocked away, picked off by Gerald Green, two on two with Morton. Green against Porter, knocked away by Miller. Another superb defensive play by Miller. The way they played defense there, Bruce, that time was by talking it out. Sean Miller told Jarrell Porter, you play the ball, I'll play the next man. And that's what you have to do on defense, you have to talk. Porter driving, loses control. Now Bobby Martin holds up, 2.50 to go. First half of play, Pittsburgh 37, Seton Hall 28. The Pirates were up 22-16, and since then the Panthers have come storming back. Shorter, missing the chippy. 
Rebound, Bobby Martin. He misses and now it drops for him. He got the roll. And it's 39-28. Ramos outside, Gerald Green back inside Ramos. He turns in and out. Rebound, Porter. Here come the Panthers. And it was knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Pittsburgh. Solid defensive play by John Mort. Carlesimo is very unhappy. Man, Evans not too pleased, <laughs> but his club is playing extremely well right now. I think the, I think the officials are right on it. There's a lot of no calls. They're letting some physical play go. If you call a foul every play, we'll have no one left at the end. So at 2.05 to go, Seton Hall going to try to cut down this 11-point deficit. Gaze feeds Green, lays it in. Terrific pass, threading the needle. I think if you ask the players, the players would rather play with officials letting it go a little bit. They don't want every little hand check, every little thing called. The players want to play. Miller on the penetration, loses his balance, rebound Gaze. Here's Gerald Green. Green pushes it, penetrates, puts it in. Two in a row for the Pirates, and they quickly cut the lead to seven. Both point guards just sent messages out. Sean Miller took the ball to the basket to prevent Gerald Green from dropping off too much. Gerald Green did it right back to him. A quickly played first half, a minute 25 to go. Shorter, down low on Ramos. Kicks it to Matthews. Now Miller for three. Rebound Walker. Seton Hall can cut it down inside five. Green to Ramos. Got it and a foul. And Ramos will go to the line. Chance for a three-point play. The foul is on Shorter. That time I, time I thought they might have missed one on the rece reception of the pass. I thought Ramos really got pounded. So we can catch on this replay right here. Boom. You don't want to call it okay, they end up giving him an opportunity for three. But again, you could probably call a foul on a lot of plays, and I think for the most part, uh, the officials want to let it go. But if it really affects the play, they're going to call it. Other than that, they're going to let it go. We'll see a great ball game. A really played in an up tempo. Second foul on Brian Shorter. Ramon Ramos connects at the free throw line. So Seton Hall now has answered with seven straight points. And the Pirates have cut it to four with a minute to go. Talked earlier about a game of streaks. That's exactly correct. Shorter. Good hustle by Shorter. Well, that shot's the shot P.J. wants to see Shorter take. Just under 45 now. The shot clock is two seconds off of the game clock. So right now on the shot clock, 33. Looks like Paul Evans is going to hold the ball out for one shot. Ramos with 13 points, the big offensive story for Seton Hall. Hit with the ball, four-point lead. Shot clock again, two seconds below that game clock. So Pitt needs to take a shot before time can expire here in the first half. Matthews with five on the shot clock. Foul call. Good move by Jason Matthews, and he'll go to the line for two. The personal is on John Morton. Seton Hall with seven seconds left, still have an opportunity to score the last hoop of this half. It's a second personal you say on John Morton. That's a pretty big foul. I think P.J. should take him out. But maybe since he's going to offense, he wants him in for that last play. No, it's only his first, his first personal. Gilbert Johnson checks in, replacing Brian Shorter. And Matthews goes to the line for two. Matthews connects on the first. He is 13th in the NCAA, shooting 90% of the line this year. Shorter on the bench with 12. And now Kavanaugh gets in the game. Pat Kavanaugh replacing Darrell Porter. Good substitution by uh, Paul Evans. I think taking getting Shorter out of the ballgame. is Bobby Martin out of the game. With seven seconds to go, you don't want to commit any, any foolish fouls. They only have five team fouls. So they could commit one to present a, the flow going towards the Seton Hall basket. Shot clock is off, seven seconds to go in the half. Pittsburgh by six. Here's Green. Green penetrates. He puts it up. And that is it for the first half of play. A half of streaks. Back and forth we went. Seton Hall at 15 in a row early to go up 22-16. Pittsburgh comes back on a 21-4 run to go up by 11. 
Seton Hall scores seven in a row before Pittsburgh answers, and at the half, it's 41 to 35, Pittsburgh. We'll be right back after these local commercial messages. For a limited time only, the contents of this briefcase can help your authorized Mercedes-Benz dealer do what no other dealer in the world can. Right now, these instruments can help negotiate lower monthly payment lease terms on the Mercedes-Benz 300E sedan. At this rate, you can't afford not to lease one. But we urge you to visit us soon because this special Mercedes-Benz program is available for a limited time only. Visit your authorized Tri-State Mercedes-Benz dealer for details. There's this dude from the west side they call the wizard who is amazing. Plays the middle at 6'4". Anything a seven-footer can do, he can do better. When he meets, he just keeps going up until all you see is the bottom of his rebox. One time, the wizard did the nastiest dunk I ever seen. Went up, hit the ball two times on the backboard, then slammed it back. Now that takes tank time. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. When I was growing up, we moved from one apartment to another. A house with a yard. That's important for a kid. My parents couldn't do it. But I promise you, your dad and me, somehow we'll make it happen. At Manufacturers Hanover, we'll help you plan ways to get the down payment you need and approve you for a mortgage even before you start to look. And then it was blocked, Kissio along the board for Obronik, he's trying to f*** it. Obronik still with it, working the backhand, it's blocked, put it in for Kelly Kissio! And now here they are, the New York Knickerbockers. The Knicks are lighting up the scoreboard like never before. Great outlet for Wilkins. Oh, man! Lighting a supercharged offense to the top of the NBA. And looking to place their names alongside those of past Nick Great. One with the excitement when the Knicks battle Akeem Olajuwon and the Houston Rockets Tuesday at 7. Fight fans, now you've got a ringside seat for the best in boxing action each month. Expert commentator Gil Clancy pulls no punches. Boxing columnist Michael Katz gives us the inside scoop. And Don Dunphy calls them the way he saw them. And I'm your host, Bruce Beck. I'll have all the news and highlights right here on MSG Network for Boxing the Sweet Science. I was just uh, unhappy, you know. Uh... My dream all my life was to make it to the NBA and play in the NBA, and here I was living this dream, and I wasn't happy. It wasn't a thing where I drank every day or, you know, I had to drink. Uh, it was more of a thing where my, my whole attitude was changing, and this was a crutch that, would, that I would l rely on if I was lonely, you know, being away from home, or if things weren't going, if I didn't play well. Um, so I think it, it was just really learning how to deal with my feelings without alcohol. My perception was you just take a month and go out there and kind of dry out. But it was interesting because there's more, you learn a lot about yourself. It's almost like going back to school. It really is. I learned a whole lot, you know, about alcoholism, about drugs. And it's almost like a 30-day, 35-day course, you know. But you're here all day. <laughs> you know, you're there 24 hours a day. Well, I think what I learned is that, that I'm not perfect. And that's okay to not to be perfect. You know, if I have a problem, you know, I can go to someone, I can let people know. And uh, I'm a pretty good person, you know what I mean? <laughs> being me is okay. You know, sometimes you get caught up in, uh, you know, being someone that the public wants you to be or being someone that someone else wants you to be. You now I just do what I want to do. And I think for a while there, I wasn't doing the things I want to do. And I, now I think I have the, the, the strength and the, and the power of my own personal life where I just do what I want to do and I know what's best for me. One of the factors I was worried about um, a, a, upon coming out with the whole thing was how everything was perceived. And then I just finally said, it doesn't really matter. You know, I got to take care of myself. So this is a very selfish thing I did. It's got to be, you know, um, it's just something that had to be done for me. You know, I did it for myself. 
So I kind of couldn't really worry about how people were going to perceive me, you know. It was something I had to do for myself to, you know, save my life. I think kids look up to athletes so much. Sometimes athletes get fooled themselves and think that they're perfect. And that's not true at all, you know. I have the same problems, everyday problems that everyone has. And I think I was always I trying to uh, duck that and say that, no, because I'm a professional basketball player, I'm Chris Mullen. These everyday things don't happen to me, but that's not true. I feel the best I've felt in my life. Or well, anyway, I'll tell you what, four years ago, probably to almost today, I was playing on the Olympic team. Um, I feel just as good now. Chris Mullen, a successful road back in All-Star this year. We'll be back after these local messages. It's Washington's birthday, and he's declared there shall be a Volkswagen Spectacular. By decree, every new Golf, GTI, and Jetta shall be available with 4.9% financing, a revolutionary rate. Furthermore, factory-to-dealer cash incentives up to $500 make additional savings possible. Great deals make this the best time to test drive a Volkswagen. After all, it's what George has always wanted. There is no evidence in the record that she ever wanted an abortion. I could not take the chance of having my wife as one of those statistics where she died. Fourteen judges so far, and the blood's on their hands. We've been through hell. They've put us through hell. Nancy Klein received the abortion, and she came through it just fine. We're pleased and relieved, and I just hope that no other family has to ever go through this again. We are there. WCBS News 88. We are there. Remember how great you felt when your car was new and beautiful? Boy, what a feeling. But how about now when your car is ugly? Better take a look at Mako's famous half-and-half -half car and get in right now on Mako's chain-wide half-price sale. You get a supreme paint job with new ultraviolet sunscreen coating for longer, better protection. Right, a better paint job at half the price. Here's how. Call 1-800-345-8500 for a free certificate worth 50% off. Mako's new supreme paint job. Sale ends March 10th, 1989. Act now. Dear Mother Babies, I wish you'd come to my town. Dreams do come true. Hey, everybody, we've got a show to do. The Muppet Babies are coming to your town with a whole new show. February 11th to March 12th at Madison Square Garden's Felt Forum. Tickets at box office or call Ticketmaster. It's the American Leader Celebration at your tri-state quality Ford dealer. Now you can get low factory financing or cash back on some of America's best-selling cars and trucks. Get 4.9% financing or up to $750 cash back on Ford Ranger, America's number one selling compact pickup. Choose 4.9% financing or $500 cash back on Ford Escort, America's number one selling car. There's cash back on Taurus and select F-Series too, all before you make your best deal during the American Leader Celebration at your tri-state quality Ford dealer. And welcome back to the MSG Sports Desk. Once again, everybody, I'm Bob Page. With the Knicks having lost only to the Lakers at the Garden all year, the hapless nuts sure weren't going to come in and beat them tonight. They didn't, as you probably saw right here on MSG, a 125-115 verdict. Not much of a game. Nets were brutal, as usual. Didn't put up much of a fight. In the first quarter, Mark Jackson on the steal. Showtime pass up court to Kenny Walker, who started tonight. And here's an instant replay of last weekend's NBA slam dunk contest, huh? Knicks led by nine at the intermission. Completely blew it open here in the second half. Charles Oakley linked to the court. Bounce pass to a streaking Gerald Wilkins. Two of his game-high 29 points, as the Knicks have now won seven of their last eight. On the NBA scoreboard tonight, 76ers now trail the Knicks by five and a half. Barkley held to 10 points and four rebounds by the Cavaliers. Indiana losing again, this time at Charlotte. Houston defeats Dallas, and that San Antonio-Utah game is one of five still in progress out west at this hour. How would the Rangers react after the most embarrassing moment of the season, last night's 10-6 humiliation at the hands of lowly Toronto? Well, they came through big time with a very impressive 5-3 win at Pittsburgh this evening. Game was tied 2-2 in the second period when Tony Granato got tied up in front of Tom Barrasso, but the puck came out to Jason Lafreniere, who scored to put New York ahead 3-2. Just four minutes later, Troy Loney with a centering pass to Jacques Callender, deflected back to Loney, who 
ties the game at three, beating Bob Froze. But now the game winner in the third period. Kissio to Ogrodnik to none other than Guy Lafleur. The Rangers lead it four to three, win it five three on an empty netter by Ogrodnik. Bob Froze with 42 saves in this one. Apparently the win Friday night at the Garden didn't take any energy away from the Leafs, who roared from behind to beat the Devils at Toronto this evening. Now the Devils led this game three to one in the third period. The score was three to two here for the Devils when Vincent Domfu scored his second goal of the game. That tied it at three. Then just a minute later on the power play, it's ex-Ranger Mark Osborne beating Sean Burke to make the score four to three as Toronto tallies four unanswered goals in the third period to beat the Devils. The Devils did get a break earlier in the evening when the Flyers, who had been leading New Jersey by seven points in the race for that final playoff spot in the Patrick Division, lost to the Isles three to two. This one tight the whole way. Two to one Islanders lead here in the third period. When on the power play, David Bullock set up Brent Sutter. Ron Hextall stopped it once, but Sutter scored on the rebound, and that gave New York the cushion they would need. In golf, Steve Elkington continues to lead this week's tour stop at La Jolla, California by two strokes. The seniors tour this weekend is at Tampa, Florida. And that, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, is the source of our Budweiser play of the day. Golf's greatest showman, Chichi Rodriguez, putting for a birdie on number 18. At his age, it's amazing he can even see that far. But Chichi drains it, then goes into his patented routine for the retirees on hand. He trails the event by a stroke. Sports Desk is brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. For the pride, for the dream, for the love, and for the team, for the sweat and for the drive, for the reason, reason you strive. For all you do, the clean, crisp taste of Beechwood Aged Budweiser. This Bud's for you, this Bud, this Bud's for you. Now Minota gives you more, gets you closer than before. Freedom Telly is your best move. Your best move. Closer, close ups, wider, wide. She gets six million side by side. Only Minolta's Freedom Telly gives you not one, but five autofocus beams for perfect focus when moonwalking. Ow! Freedom Telly is your best move. Your best move. Freedom Cameras, only from the mind. In college basketball earlier today, St. John's wanted DePaul 67-64 among the nation's top 10 tonight. Oklahoma over Colorado easily. Number two, Arizona probably knocked UCLA out of the top 20. Number four, Georgetown beat Boston College. Syracuse over Providence 87-80. Number six, Illinois lost at Wisconsin. Surprised at the number of points they lost by. Number nine, Florida State losing to Memphis State. And Ohio State knocked off by Northwestern tonight in their first game without Jay Burson. Back to the Big East after this. It takes years of experience and knowledge. And hours of hard work. It's called teamwork. At Manufacturers Hanover, teamwork means performance. To solve intricate financial challenges, you have to be able to pull together. It's an emergency. You're going to need blood. Blood you can trust. That's why DuPont worked to create a highly accurate method of testing to help protect our blood supply from the deadly AIDS virus. Their system enables us to have more confidence that the blood we need to live won't be hazardous to our health. Your husband's gonna make it. At DuPont, we make Jack. the things that make a difference. Better things for better living. A part of the Meadowlands experience tonight at midnight here on MSG Network. I wanted to be a catcher in the major leagues or I wanted to be 
a running back in the NFL. But after, after I got hit a few times in Little League in high school and college, I said, nah. But I also wanted to be a broadcaster when I was a kid because I used to listen to uh, baseball games on, on radio like so many millions of other kids. Yeah, you asleep yet? Yeah, okay, I'm sleeping. You got the radio underneath and you're listening, pulling in St. Louis or something or Chicago. So, uh, you know, I figured if you couldn't play it, why not be there and talk about it? Coming this spring to MSG Network. Halftime at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse and the Panthers of Pittsburgh lead the Pirates of Seton Hall by six points. We talked a lot about the inside defense of Pittsburgh and Sean Miller's done a terrific job doubling back and helping. Yeah, he certainly has. Early on, that was a problem. Seton Hall was getting the ball inside. Ramos was getting the ball, putting the ball up off the glass with no real anybody contending him other than Brian Shorter. But as, as Pittsburgh made their run, they, they came down, they started playing Ramos inside. Here it was just Bobby Martin by himself. But in a clip we're about to show, we'll see Ramos kick the ball back outside because of, of the physical play, people helping out. You see Bobby Martin here, and you see Sean Miller come over to help defend, and everyone's around Ramos. Is the second, the second half of the first half, they really played good team defense. Gerald Green popping out and nailing the three-pointer. Both teams successful from the three-point stripe in that first half of play. Brian Shorter, just a monster on the boards. And again, Darrell Porter, as well as Sean Miller, can run the break. Now, on this play, I think it's offensive interference because he, he loses the ball, and then he shakes the rim. See, the rim is moving, and who's to say that ball on the rim wasn't coaxed in by the shaking of the rim? It's still amazing. The ball went in. Give him credit for the hoop. Here's the it. first half numbers, and you can see a lot of points from the three-point land for Pittsburgh, 15 points. Seton Hall with nine from out there. Also, rebounding-wise, 20 to 13. I'm sure that's something P.J. talked about at halftime. Individual scoring in the first half of play. Ramon Ramos led Seton Hall with 13. Andrew Gaze with 10. Gerald Green with 7. And for the Pitt Panthers, Brian Shorter with 12. Jason Matthews 11. Bobby Martin with 8 points. All three of Matthews hoops are from beyond the three-point line. So who's winning the battle on the inside? Well, you'd have to say Pittsburgh so far. They're winning the glass 20 to 13. Uh, Scoring-wise, Ramos does, uh, is the leading scorer in the game with 13 points. Second half of play. Seton Hall with the basketball. Gerald Green out to Andrew Gaze. The Pirates 8 and 4 in second place in the Big East. Pittsburgh 6 and 6. Darrell Walker, a non factor in that first half. He has to get it going a little bit. Gaze's pass picked up by Ramos. 20 seconds in the shot clock. Here's Ramos spinning. And the rebound pulled down by Porter with some help from Miller. 5 0 1. And a good defensive play by John Morton. He was the only Pirate back, and he got his hand on the ball. Well, that's great transition offense when you can get a 5-on-1 fast break. That means Bobby Martin was down there along with Brian Shorter. Both teams play man-to-man -man almost exclusively. Pittsburgh looking for their first three-game winning streak of the year. They have not lost more than two in a row. They have not won more than two in a row. Porter. On the penetration, kicks it out to Matthews. Miller, eight assists in the first half. Comes off back-to-back, -back 11 assist ball games. Porter on the penetration. Blocked by Gaze, picked off by Ramos. Here's Seton Hall in transition. Gerald Green, all the way rejected by Porter. Darrell, Darrell Porter got that one right back. This guy, a great athlete, could have been a wide receiver at any major college football program. See the defense there. There were four white shirts down there. Ramos posting up. His shot was altered by Bobby Martin, and the rebound pulled down by Brian Shorter. Miller to Porter. Seeking all the straight man. Walker with a good move in defending the ball from Shorter. you got to work without the ball defensively. Again, Shorter, you've got to front him really every chance you get. There's no time to rest when you're playing Brian Shorter because he just goes box to box. And with that body, you have to, you have to stay near him. Still no scoring. We're a minute 30 into the second half. Pittsburgh with a six-point lead. Bobby Martin outside Darrell Porter. 
He pulls up. Rebound Ramos. Slower tempo as we begin things here in half number two. That won't last. Again, Dow Walker has to make Brian Shore to play at this end. He's resting up to go to the other end. Ramos off a pretty feed from Andrew Gaines, and Ramos is 15, and it's a four-point ball game. With the left hand, he used his left hand as well as any other, any other big man in the league. Miller backing in on Green. Now Matthews pops out, and he threw it away. Substitution as Rod Brooken reports in, replacing Darrell Porter, and Brooken didn't score so much in the first half, but his presence uh, made a difference, and when he came into the ball game, it picked Pittsburgh up. He made a big three. Paul Evans pretty upset with Darrell Porter's last two shots. Morton nails a two-point field goal. Carlesimo is shouting for three, but he'll only get two. But it's a 41-39 game. Back down to two. Pittsburgh wants to prevent one of those runs like we saw in the first half. That's the first bucket for John Morton in the game. And Shorter got away with one that was right around the rim. He gets the offensive tip. Darrell Walker has to put a body on it. has to be checked off. Four-point lead, Panthers. Ramos open, leans in, and lays it in. Boy, Ramos is really a force inside. He is working himself into the first or second round of the NBA draft, one would think. Big strong power forward. He's got a shot. He's worked hard to make himself better. Miller, outside. Miller has made few mistakes at the point the last four games. So Gerald Green's very active with his hands. That makes it very difficult to see those people inside. It's not always the inside defenders. The people outside have to play defense to prevent that entry pass. Here's Shorter spinning. He hits. And that's the first time in the second half Pitt's been able to work the ball inside effectively. Green to Gaze. Loops it inside to Walker. And a foul is called. And Gaze is such a, a good passing forward. He doesn't get credited for it. That looked like a set play because he was really open on the backside. But still, Pittsburgh came, Pittsburgh came around and played defense. Second foul on Matthews. Darrell Walker does a good job sealing Bryant Shorter on the top side. But again, Matthews came over to help out. And Bobby Martin blocked the shot. Darrell Walker at the free throw line made 32 consecutive free throws earlier this year. 6'8", senior from All Hollows High School in New York City. And he connects on the first. Early this season, of course, he had 20 points and 17 rebounds in their big victory over Georgetown. He's been a little quiet offensively the last two or three games. Yeah, very quiet in the first half. Didn't score in the first half. Only had three rebounds. Seton Hall cuts the lead to two. Martin out to help out Sean Miller. Here's Matthews. Back to Miller. Martin knocked away and knocked out of bounds by Ramon Ramos. And we have a timeout on the court. 15.52 to go in the second half of play. Pittsburgh 45, Seton Hall 43. There's no reason for you to jump through hoops when you're looking for a great room at a great price. Just look for a Days Inn, hotel, or suite. Our 130 owners right here in the Big East are not only bringing you this conference broadcast, but they're bringing you a great room at a great price, with restaurants, lounges, even meeting rooms. So if you're looking for a great room at a great price, choose a Days Inn. Staying anywhere else is a foul. You want to drive to the sun with the most features under the sun. Oh, wow. Introducing the new Plymouth Sundance with 47 standard features. Prices starting at $88.20. Best value in its class and backed by 770 protection. The Plymouth Sundance proves yet again the nine most important words Plymouth knows. Satisfy the customer. Satisfy the customer. Satisfy the customer. See your local Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. Dream by the fire. 
With flights to 14 Florida cities and the Bahamas, Piedmont can change all your ideas about winter. Walking in a winter wonderland. Pittsburgh with four rejections in this ball game. Seton Hall with just one. And let's watch closely Darrell Porter. Yeah, Porter's shot was blocked at the other end, but he kept his head up, came down, trailed the play. Four defenders, and there's Bobby Martin, the fifth. Porter makes the block. Wow, that's athleticism. Whew. That's a great word, too, athleticism. Sean Miller at the controls for the Panthers. Pittsburgh up by a deuce. It's been a much more closely played second half. Shorter, he got it, and a foul. I think he got away with the travel there. There is nobody in the league that is more difficult to stop in that position in the lane. See if he walks here. Yeah, he sure does. He's so strong. Any of you 6'9", he'd be play, he could be a, a, one of those Carl Malone type players in the NBA right now. But he got away with a couple of little steps there. 18 points for Brian Shorter. He's been over 20 14 times this year, and he's getting close again. Ramos on the rebound. Gerald Green to Ramos. Outside John Mort. Three-point bucket by Mort, who has been very quiet in this ball game. I'm sure PJ told him during that time, John, you have to get into the game and score a little outside for us. They got an open remote up inside. And it's a one-point game. Miller dishes to Matthews. Backing in on Morton, good defense by John Morton. Seton Hall really working on man-to-man. -man. Walker is fronting shorter inside. Shot clock again down to 20. Pittsburgh's really had to work on offense in the second half. Lots of pushing and shoving underneath. Fans wanted a foul on Walker. Here's Matthews. He hits. They're letting him play with both ends. I have no problem with that. 13 for Matthews, three-point lead for Pittsburgh. Walker backing in against Shorter. Puts it up, rejected by Bobby Martin. It's a hell ball, and the arrow points to Pittsburgh. I think Brian Shorter got an elbow in the top of his head there. Great help defense by Bobby Martin. He was already almost down on the floor when he blocked his shot. Watch him come flying. There he is. Boom. Oh. You see Brian Shorter got it across the top of his head. So Pittsburgh with the arrow pointing their way with the basketball and a three-point lead. The Panthers, who have beaten Syracuse, Georgetown, Oklahoma, and Seton Hall this year. Miller, a long air ball, and it goes out of bounds to Seton Hall. Whitey, we talked earlier, the importance of this game for Pittsburgh. They're 13 and 10. They still have games to go with Villanova and two with UConn. Yeah, two of those games are here, so that'll help. They have to go up to Hartford once, so uh, the road doesn't get any easier for any of these Big East teams. You got to win at home, don't you? Certainly do. Ramos backs in, goes glass, and he hits it. Tough shot. 49-48, Ramos 19. Ramos and Brian Shorter, both ends. I like the substitution, bring it Volsi in now. Give Darrell Walker a break. Show Brian Shorter a little different defense inside, a little more physical. So now it's Volsi, number 30, pushing off Shorter, double zero on the inside. Brooking. Dishes to Bobby Mark. He goes to the hoop. Rebound, Gates, and Seton Hall with a chance to take the lead for the first time in this second half. John Morton penetrates, dishes to Ramos. He hits, and Ramos has 21. Well, that kills you when he can go outside and make that 15-footer. You know, you talk about a guy who's an effective player inside now. Seton Hall with a one-point lead. And their first lead of the second half with 13-15 to go. Brooking outside Miller. Darrell Porter looking inside. Here's Shorter backing it against Franz Volsi. He puts it in. He muscled his way up between two blue jerseys. Help defense that time and everything. Brian Shorter split everybody. Pittsburgh back up by a one. Volsi foul called. It's on Shorter, and that's his third. Needless to say, that could be real important as this game goes on. I really don't think he was ready defensively in that play. No, Seton Hall brought the ball in real quick to him. 
See, he kind of tripped there, and that cost him. See, Valsi, keep him on his back, though. That's what's important. Big people have to learn to seal up. If you can keep your defender on your back, you give you a nice big target to the guy trying to get the ball to you. Matthews replaces Brookin for the Panthers. Gaze inbound speed, throws it away. Matthews gets it to Miller. Four on three, fast break. Martin takes the baseline and slams it in the face of Gaze and a foul. Andrew Gaze is never going to block that shot. Again, Sean Miller. The key thing for a point guard to do is deliver the ball to the, to the correct person. Bobby Martin, he gave the ball to him. Martin, bam, right to the basket. Gaze didn't have a chance to stop that one. And in your face slam. In your face disgrace. And don't think this crowd didn't love that. 53-50, Panthers by three with a chance to go four. When Bobby Martin plays a power game such as that, it really makes him that much better. He next, converts the three-point play. They already re recruited a center for next year so he can move over. 54-50, Pittsburgh back up by four. Morton for Ramos, backs in, goes glass. Rebound shorter, knocked out of bounds, Pittsburgh basketball. Evans signaling to his team. Evans says he likes this group. He's having fun coaching these sophomores. Sophomores, I'll all be back. Shorter with a beautiful move. You gotta love coaching a player like Brian Shorter. Six point lead, Panthers. They've turned it up a notch. He's such a power player, you don't think he can do anything from outside. He goes right past his man. Ramos gets his own board. Oh. Misses the jam. Rebound, Green. Wide open, Avon. Make sure he gets that jab. That rim held down a little bit after the first attempted dunk. Avon had a little bit shorter to go up. Maybe 9 foot 11. 11.40 11 to play. Pittsburgh with a four point lead. Matthews backing in on Morton. Has not been an offensive factor in the second half, Jason Matthews. Sat out for a while while Brooklyn was in. Miller wants the ball, 20 seconds on the shot clock. Martin fires. Gaze has the rebound. Green triggers it quickly to Morton, drives. Foul call, offensive foul on John Morton as Bobby Martin took the charge. Second foul on Morton, third team foul at Seton Hall. Time out of the court. We'll be back after these local messages. This is MSG. College basketball is unrivaled in American sports for its loyal regional following, unbridled enthusiasm, and dazzling athletic energy. Again this season, MSG Network brings you a national lineup of great matchups from the Big East, Atlantic 10, SEC, Metro, and Pac-10 conferences, while featuring local favorite St. John's. Rhode Island tips off against West Virginia tomorrow at 6. MSG Network. Look to us for greatness. It's the World Wrestling Federation from Madison Square Garden, the mecca of professional wrestling. Bring home the madness and the mania, Monday at 8. Well, they're really banging inside. Pittsburgh leading by four, but Walker and Shorter are having fun in there, aren't they, Whitey? Is this the NBA or, or the Seoul Olympics? I still think the players like this. They'd much rather be physical and, and have the officials just let them play. As we see this continue, sure, when you play Brian Shorter, you have to be physical. He's a physical player, clean player, but a very physical player. And there was some contact there, just a little bit. <laughs> just a little. Shorter has three personals. He has to be a little careful. Is Seton Hall spending too much time just going to Ramos? Are they, are they forgetting the other players? Well, I think Morton has to be more involved. Porter lays it up and in. Darrell Porter puts Pittsburgh up by six. And where's Andrew Gaze? When you talk about offense, he hasn't been involved at all. He's been working the defensive boards, and that's been about it. Here's Ramos. 
Outside to Morton. Morton penetrates. He pulls up, draws the foul, and that's the offensive weapon you were talking about. Yeah, I think Morton is, is their best offensive weapon outside of Ramos, but I think Andrew Gaze has to be more involved. He had 10 points in the first half. I don't know for sure, but I don't think he scored in the second half. Third foul on Jason Matthews. Third team foul on Pittsburgh. John Morton at the free throw line, shooting two. two. See, another thing, it's Matthews' third personal. Shorter has three personals. You're talking about a team that has no bench to speak of after Rod Brooken. Late in the game, if there are some fouls committed, now those could really be factors. Matthews and Shorter will have to stop playing defense, and that will really open things up inside for Ramos. Morton has only eight points in the game, well below his average of 16 and a half. Plenty of time left, plenty of free throws yet to be shot in this ballgame. Seton Hall shoots 75%, Pittsburgh 73%, 10.35 to play, Pittsburgh by four. It hasn't been a half of runs the way the first half was. Miller with the basketball. Matthews dumps it to Martin. Porter. Matthews with 12 on the shot clock. Martin gets to it with 10 on the shot clock. Gay's really helping out. Gay's playing team defense. Matthews with five on the shot clock. And the rebound to Anthony Avent. Under 10 minutes to play. Seton Hall looking for their first ever winning season in the Big East. Last year they were eight and eight. This year they already have eight wins with four to play. Gaze to Ramos, and they're really letting him play now. <laughs> Ramos cleared himself to get that ball. Shot clock on this end is down to 17. Morton for three. Rebound, Miller, and a foul called on John Morton. Boy, that was a big foul because Morton was about to, they were gonna go three on one the other way on Gerald Green, so he prevented an easy basket, only the fourth team foul for Seton Hall. Miller with 12 assists in the ball game. That comes off back-to-back -back 11 assist efforts. That, that surprised me that, that would be his career high. The school record here is only 16. He has a chance to break that with 9.15 to go. That was the third foul on John Morton. Seton Hall with 14 fouls. Pittsburgh with three team fouls. Morton now playing Jarrell Porter and Gaze is guarding Matthews. Oh, offensive foul, Shorter mixing it up with Avent, and that's number four on Brian Shorter. And the complexion of the game could change. Now, do you think Paul Evans might have a complaint after all the physical play that's going on here? Oh, yeah, there it is. That's call, the call. Can't not call that. See, they'll let the other stuff go that, that is kind of, uh, that isn't quite so blatant, but that was a blatant elbow, uh, you have to call it. Now, Shorter will say certainly he, he gave the second shot that Darrell Walker got him first. I'm sorry, they even got him first. So to the bench goes Shorter with 8.58 to play and Pittsburgh leading by four. Avent outside Gerald Green. Green on the penetration. Ramos pulls up and it will not drop, but he'll get two shots out of it. It's on Bobby Martin. And Ramos, a very good free throw shooter, will go to the line. That's the second personal on Bobby Martin. Now, earlier I said they were going to Ramos too much. Now do you go back to Ramos every chance you can? Well, I, I Only think Martin's inside. You don't have two big guys in and, there. And the thing is, before they had Shorter guarding Ramos and, and Martin helping out. So now they can just go to Ramos. I think they should. They should really look for him because it's going to force the Pittsburgh people to go down on him. And that certainly should open up Morton and Gerald Green and maybe Andrew Gaze for some threes. Ramos, 22 points, six rebounds. Well, what, a luxury. All within two. what a luxury to have a big man that bangs like crazy. He's going to go to the foul line and shoot good free throws. Ramos, an 81% free throw shooter. Eight and a half to play. Pittsburgh, 58. Seton Hall, 56. A good one at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Foul called away from the ball. Martin and Avent pushing and shoving. And this time, they whistle Avent. It looks like Timmy Higgins is trying to clean this thing up a little bit. Uh, Avent is a very physical player. Yep, that was it, the first throw. But we saw a lot worse earlier. But I think he's trying to clean it up. It's getting late in the game now. And 
Yeah, I think the bottom line is they've been consistent. They're only calling the, the major pushing each other. Well, obvious was they had the call. And that's good. As long as you're consistent, I would think coaches are happy. Miller with the basketball on the baseline. He hits! What a great shot over Anthony Avery. So Miller pulling up for a big J as Pittsburgh extends their lead back to four again. Gaze. Out to Gerald Green. Avent posting up. He walked. He took a shuffle. And he got whistled. 7.51 to play in a classic Big East match. Pittsburgh by four. Back after these local messages. Shoes at hey, Vern, it's time to play Sponsor Squares. Here's our first contestant with the best deals you'll find anywhere. Let's take a look. It's the Brick Church President's Day Sale. Spectacular savings like a Sony AM-FM cassette Walkman, only $29.99. Or a portable washer-dryer combo, only $118. Only at Brick Church. Well, that's all the time we need. I think when it comes to great deals, we've definitely found a winner. And the savings were behind door number one the whole time. What do we have for him, Johnny? <laughs> We'll be selecting the Plymouth player of the game at the conclusion of this game and during every game televised by the Big East Conference Television Network, part of the Chrysler Corporation sponsorship of Big East Basketball. There are a lot of candidates tonight. Ramon Ramos, 23 points, six boards for Seton Hall. Brian Shorter on the bench, 21 points, seven rebounds for Pittsburgh. It's Bruce Beck and Whitey Rigsby at Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Under eight minutes to play. Four-point lead for Pittsburgh. Be interesting to see how long Paul Evans keeps Schroeder on the bench. A lot will have to do with how the score goes, I'm sure. Matthews, Miller wants the ball. Franz Volsi at the scorer's table, set to report for the Pirates. Porter, Bobby Martin back to Porter inside the three-point line. Rebound, Brooken. Good hustle by Brooken. Miller for three. Martin with the offensive rebound. And a foul call on John Morton. And that is number four. So a lot of times when you shoot the three-pointers, you end up getting long rebounds. And that time, Pitt Pittsburgh took advantage of two long rebounds. You could box out till the cows come home. It's not going to make a difference when the ball comes that far off the rim. Michael Cooper's first appearance. He's there. Uh, he's generally their sixth man. So Mike Cooper in the game. Avent heads to the bench. Seton Hall now going with Volsey, Cooper, Green, Gaze, and Ramos. Shorter on the bench with four. Morton now on the bench with four. Martin posting up. Rejected by Volsey, foul called. I don't believe it was Volsey, I think it was Ramos. Yeah, they got Ramos. Number three on Ramon. Seton Hall over the limit. Pittsburgh with five team fouls with 7.05 remaining. Pittsburgh looking for a sweep over Seton Hall. To sweep Seton Hall this year is really doing something because they've had a terrific season. Interesting lineup PJ has on the floor now with Gerald Green. Really has no other guards. He'll probably bring Gaze out a little bit along with Cooper. Cooper kind of plays anywhere, but he does have the real good range on his jumper. Martin gets the roll, and Bobby Martin with 13 points and six boards. Six-point lead, Pittsburgh. Ramos backing in. Rebound, Volsi loses the ball. Matthews gets it. Under seven minutes to play. Pittsburgh nursing a six-point lead. Playing extremely well right now with their big guy on the bench. Jason Matthews not involved in the offense the second half. Darrell Porter dishes it to Brooken. Matthews for three. Got it! Nine-point lead for Pittsburgh. You give Matthews time to set his three-pointer, he's going to make it almost all the time. 
14 for Matthews. Seton Hall wants to talk about it. The Panthers with Brian Shorter on the bench with four fouls are coming alive. They lead it 65 to 56. There's this dude from the west side they call the wizard who is amazing. Plays the middle at 6 4. Anything a seven footer can do, he can do better. When he leaps, he just keeps going up until all you see is the bottom of his rebox. One time, the wizard did the nastiest dunk I ever seen. Went up, hit the ball two times on the backboard, then slammed back. Now that takes tank time. When the new legends are made, they'll be wearing Reeboks. You know, Piedmont Airlines is making it easy for you to visit old friends, like the Crab Apples. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Crab Apple. Or your favorite acting teacher. Emote, students. Emote. Or your old college buddies. Hey, guys. Piedmont presents Going Places Prices. Really low fares to over 170 cities. Call Piedmont or your travel agent now. You can even visit an old army buddy. Yo! This copyrighted telecast produced by authority of the Big East Conference intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is prohibited. Seton Hall down by 9, 6-18 to play. Seton Hall has to get a hoop here. Pittsburgh playing tenacious defense. Cooper guarded by Porter. Ramos goes inside. Foul call. Almost got the roll. Martin's going to get ticketed with the personal. Number three on Bobby Martin. Evans feels that he walked. Pittsburgh, as well as Ramos, is scoring in the second half. Pittsburgh's doing a good job helping out, whether it was Martin or earlier it was Brian Shorter. They helped out Shorter. See Rod Brooker right there on the play. Oh, he did walk. For two. Nails the first. 24 points for Ramon Ramos, getting close to that career high he set on Wednesday against UConn. I don't think Morton can stay out of the game too very long. Ramos in double figures, 10 straight games. He's in an offensive groove tonight. It's a seven point lead for the Pitt Panthers. Still on the bench, Brian Shorter went to the bench with 8.58 to play. His club up four. He's still on the bench with 5.50 to play. His club is up seven. Brooking. Outside to Miller. Cooper, his body all over Darrell Porter, and he's called for a foul, and it will be one and one for Darrell Porter, a 74% free throw shooter. Michael Cooper has a lot of bodies, so when his body's all over you, you know it. Uh, again, they're letting him play a little bit, but that time the old uh, body check, like they're playing hockey out there. They're playing hockey across town at the Civic Arena, the New York Rangers and the Pittsburgh Penguins' Key Patrick Division encounter. Porter nails the front end of the one and one. Porter, young man from Perry High School in Pittsburgh. Rebound, Volsey. Five and a half to play. Seton Hall down by eight. Volsey, poor pass. Picked off by Matthews. This is where Sean Miller is so tough because he commits few mistakes. And he can shoot free throws, just like yeah. Jason Matthews. I mean, they'll be shooting them the rest of the way now. Darrell Walker has not been in much the second half. He's about ready to get, come back in the ball game. Coming up on five minutes in the ball game. Paul, Miller. Paul Evans just wants to get a good shot. Martin on the post. Ten seconds of the shot clock. Porter. Rebound, Volsey foul call. It's on Porter over the back. A little bit of frustration, maybe. Yeah, certainly. Not, not a play that Paul Evans wanted. He had a pretty good shot, but that shot about seven or eight feet out on the side is, is probably the most difficult shot you're going to take because you, you lose your depth perception. So Pittsburgh is now over the limit. And it will be one and one for Seton Hall. P.J. Carlesimo 
Big East Coach of the Year a year ago. Back-to-back 20-win -back seasons. He wants to get that magical nine number for Big East Conference wins. Timeouts left, Seton all two, hit four. Bolsey 71% from the free throw line. 4.48 to play. Shorter still on the bench. One and one for Bolsey. Got it. Darrell Walker at the table, he'll replace Volsey as soon as he can get in. He makes the second free throw. Can he get in? Oh, sure. Well, we'll take your word for it, Whitey. So Walker replaces Volsey after Volsey nails the two free throws. A lot of guys will miss that second one so they stay in the game. <laughs> yeah. Not me. Full court man-to-man -man pressure now by Seton Hall. Now they pull the pressure off. Like you said, Miller is so tough here. Along with Matthews and Porter, they all handle the ball pretty well. Miller is an excellent dribbler. Seton Hall really got to suck it up on defense here and force Pittsburgh to take a bad shot. Again, the 45, they have to just play good defense. Let the 45 second clock you know, advance because they can't just hold it. Not like in the good old days. 425 to play. Six point Pittsburgh lead. Matthews on the drive, blocking foul. A hold on Gaze. And Matthews will go to the free throw line. 13th in the NCAA, 90% from the free throw line. One and one. See so what Gaze wants to do with Matthews. He's just not quick enough to stay with him. He wants to try to direct him back towards the middle of the floor. We see the big guy, Brian Shorter, getting ready to come back in with 420 left. Panthers up six. He'll come in for Matthews. And the foul. Jason Matthews. 16 points for Jason Matthews. He's been averaging 21 points per game over the last three. And he has really come alive this year offensively. Last year, averaged eight points per game. This year, 17. He exudes confidence right now. Sure does. It. And his parents are in from uh, Los Angeles to see him play. And they're, they're really getting a good effort from their son this evening. Shorter is back. Matthews leaves. And Pittsburgh got the job done with Shorter on the bench for four minutes and 38 seconds. They extended a four-point lead to eight. That's what they wanted to do. Morton's going to get back in the game shortly, I'm sure, for Seton Hall. Green driving. Pumps. Ramos with the rebound. Foul called. And it's on Pittsburgh. It's on Darrell Porter in second. Ramos will go to the line for two. Well, when Tim Higgins blew that whistle, <laughs> all the Pittsburgh Panther fans got a little nervous. I think maybe he's on shorter. These last four minutes, I have a funny feeling. Will take forever. <laughs> we, a game, little while. This game was rolling along real smoothly there. So Ramon Ramos takes his turn at the free throw line. Matthews quickly back in. Porter goes out. Seton Hall going with Cooper and Walker and Ramos and Green and Gaze and Pittsburgh going with Matthews and Miller and Martin, Brooklyn and Shorter. A big miss. You know, the fatigue factor should not hit Seton Hall as badly as Pittsburgh because Seton Hall, those guys have been getting blows. They've been getting in and out, is where the Pittsburgh people, for the most part, have stayed on the floor. I'm sure, Ramos makes this when PJ's going to extend the floor a little bit. Press probably full court. Ramos 0 for 2, but the ball kept alive by Michael Cooper. Oh, what an offensive rebound. And now Matthews with a steal. Boy, that's a big defensive play. Jason Matthews was down the other end getting ready for offense. He ran the length of the court to pick that one off. The crowd on their feet off of Aliquippa Street here at the Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. Pittsburgh, it's their ball game if they want it. They lead by eight with 340 to play. Panthers looking for their 14th win of the year. Long way from over. Ramos, good hustle, comes up with the steal. Well, Ramos doing it at both ends. Green, driving. Forces it to Cooper. Seagull standing around, no one really wants to take the shot. Morton is on the bench. Gaze hasn't been shooting much. They're getting in the position where they're going to need a three. You might see Nick Katsik is back in the game for Seton Hall. Shot clock is down to 20. Man-to-man -man defense, extraordinaire here by Pittsburgh. Gaze for three. Got it! 
Boy, what a great play by Seton Hall. The team effort, they just stayed with it. They're a confident bunch. The, the clock runs down, they're not going to get too nervous. John Morton getting set to come in. 2.50 to play. Morton getting set to report back in. Five-point lead for Pittsburgh. Gaze on Matthews. Shot clock to 25. It's a difficult matchup here. Michael Cooper guarding Miller. Shot clock to 17. Game clock 220. They switch back green back on Miller. Brooking. And we get a timeout called by Pittsburgh. So there will be 13 seconds left on the clock. When we come back, Pittsburgh with the basketball and a five-point lead. So how much you making now? Huh? I'm going fine. You got to be making at least 25. I'm fine. Maybe a little better than that. 30? Tell me yes or no. Are you making 30? Around 30. You got any investments? Any stuff? Not really. You're making 30, and you don't have anything like that. What do you think? You're 18 years old or something? If you're planning a vacation this winter, U.S. Air has some good news and some bad news. The good news is, U.S. Air has low fares on lots of departures to sunny Florida, Arizona, and California. The bad news is, our low fares are round trip. Well, the Panther hopes to be smiling in about two minutes and 16 seconds. Pittsburgh with a five-point lead, 2.16 left. Now, keep in mind, there are only 13 seconds left on the shot clock as Pittsburgh inbounds from side court. There's a look at the foul trouble. Morton and Shorter both in the game, both with four. Now, Morton did not come in the game. P.J. went racing over to say he did not want that substitute. He wants more than offense. Okay, so Morton is still on the bench. And we have a whistle. Timeout, Pittsburgh. And now Timmy Higgins says we got a whistle, a foul the before official, the timeout. Let's wait and see. The officials have to work together. Which happened first? Timeout, Pittsburgh. Timeout, that's, White. That's excellent officiating. You know, you have to talk it out, see what happened first. Peter Pavia called the timeout first. He felt that Brooklyn called the timeout. To be totally honest with you, I think the foul should have been on Sean Miller anyway. The Pittsburgh people are complaining, but I think Miller pulled Gerald Green on top of him. It may have worked to Pittsburgh's advantage in this case. Let's, let's pick up that last play, all right? They're out of the screen there. There you go. No, he was oh, no, he was <laughs> <laughs> What game are we watching? But... You see Pavia's hand in the air. They call the timeout. Two timeouts left for each club. Situation remains the same. 2.16 to play. Pittsburgh, five-point lead. First and 10 on the 10-yard on the line. See what PJ's doing by not putting Morton in. Morton with four personal fouls. He's going to go offense, defense from here on in. He right. figures there's going to be some kind of stoppage to play, whether it's a foul or whatever. With 13 seconds on the shot clock, uh, he's going to just use Morton on offense if he can. I'm not so sure with just 13 seconds left, he should put Morton in now because Pitt's going to have to do something real quick. There's not going to be a whole lot of defense played, and he needs Morton at the other end to shoot a three. Plenty of time left. Brooken will trigger it in. Matthews, shot clock at 10. Whistle, and a foul called on Gaze, and that is not something that Carlesima wanted. No, as I said before, Andrew Gaze has to try to get Matthews back to the middle of the floor, so where he's going to get some help. Man for man, he, Matthews is just too quick for him. Matthews is six foot three, and Gaze is six seven. And plus, Matthews has a lot of built-in quickness that Gaze just doesn't have. So Matthews at the free throw line, one and one. And you're looking at one of the best free throw shooters in the country. 19 points, five for five from the line for Matthews. We talk player of the game. Jason Matthews' name has to be right there at the top of the list. He's so confident at the line. Seven point Pittsburgh lead, 2-12 to play. Green. Ramos goes down, so does Poppy Martin. And now a whistle as Green penetrated. It's on Sean Miller for a hold. 
And Gerald Green will go to the free throw line for one and one. This has been a physical game right from the get, and they're still letting it go. I didn't even, you see Ramos and Bobby Martin both go down in a pile. <laughs> well, see what happened there was, was Miller tripped over his old man. He tripped over Bobby Martin's leg, and you know the official has to call that foul. Gerald Green, who is just 69% in the last four minutes from the free throw line this year, 76% overall. But he's a guy who Carlosimo has said he'd like to have on the line most in a pressure situation. We'll find out. He hits the first. 2.04 to play, Seton Hall within six. You know, with the three-point shot in, Nick Katsikas is in the ballgame now to shoot that three-pointer. There's still so much time. A 2.04 is an awful lot of time. So Morton is still on the bench for Seton Hall as Green cuts the lead to five. 2.04 to play, Katsikas on the floor with Green, Ramos, Cooper, and Walker for Seton Hall. Matthews, Miller, Brook and Shorter, Bobby Martin starting five on the floor for Pittsburgh. So who do you Actually, foul? Actually, it's not the starting five, Brooken is in off the bench. Bobby Martin has to be the guy you want to foul, or Rod Brooken, they're both around 60. And the foul is called to Michael Cooper, and if you foul somebody, you might as well foul him. 61%, I mean, you don't want to foul Matthews or Miller, that's for sure. Now the Morton. chess game continues as Morton and Gaze come in, Cooper leaves, Katsikis leaves. See, Katsikis was in the ballgame. We think he's in the ballgame to shoot the three. Actually, he's in the ballgame to commit a foul. Now Porter comes in for defensive purposes, replaces Matthews. Some big free throws right here. Rod Brook and misses. We go down, they can get it into two. One and one for Rod Brook. Comley hits the first. Brooklyn who had 24 against Oklahoma in an unbelievable performance. Eight rebounds, four steals in that game. And he nails two free throws. Conley, seven point lead Pittsburgh, a minute 50 to play. Green, Walker spinning. Offensive foul on Walker and Shorter was the guy who took it. No doubt about that one. You don't have to question the heart of Shorter, do you? No, nope. standing, didn't move. Darrell Walker just put his head down. He had nothing on his mind other than taking that ball to the basket. And Shorter just stood there and took the impact. Again, Katsikis and Cooper in the ball game. I'm sure one of them will commit the foul. Third foul on Walker. Pittsburgh's ball with a minute 43 to play. Seven point lead for the Panthers. Miller and Matthews are the 90% free throw shooters. Matthews to Shorter, back to Miller, minute 25 to play. Pittsburgh by seven, foul called, and again, Cooper fouls Brooken, the guy you want to foul, and Brooken will go back to the line for one and one. Now Morton and Gaze are in for Seton Hall, then Porter is back in for Pittsburgh. Rod Brooken really could do some damage right here if he makes two more free throws. Brooken at the line for one and one. Three straight free throws by Rod Brooken, a 61% free throw shooter. And we talk about the confidence of, of this Seton Hall team. This Pittsburgh team is, is really playing very confident at this point in the season. Look at Brooken, goes up there, 61% shooter, knocks down all four. Pittsburgh by nine, 74-65, a minute 20 to play. Got to get a three here. Morton for three. He hits! Six-point ball game, a minute 14 left. What a great shot. Miller to Porter. Got to foul somebody else. You don't want to foul Brooke in there. He knows he's on a roll, but you don't want to foul Sean Miller either. One minute to go. Pittsburgh 74, Seton Hall 68. Shorter, foul ball. It's on Darrell Walker, his fourth. And Shorter, a 70% free throw shooter, will go to the line. Nick Katsikis, a three-point threat on the floor for Seton Hall. Brian Shorter just about 70%. That time Andrew Gaze was trying to foul Rod Brooken. He took a good swing into the ref didn't see, but Brooken responded. Shorter, 22 points in the game, two for three from the free throw line, 70% free throw shooter. 
Interesting though, the, the Panthers pulled away when he was on the bench. They extended, they doubled their lead from four to eight. Pittsburgh is hitting every free throw, and they lead by seven. So comforting when you're you're the fan of a team that shoots good free throws down the stretch. There's no there's no reason to be upset if you can go to the foul line. Pittsburgh by eight, 52 seconds to play. Green to Morton for three. Off the mark. Loose underneath. Brooklyn has the ball. And we get a whistle. Held ball. The arrow points to Seton Hall. So the Pirates get a break with 44 seconds to play. Andrew Gaines will trigger it in for the Pirates. Seton Hall, 8 and 4 in Big East play. Pittsburgh, 6 and 6. Panthers looking for a clean sweep of the season series, and they're trying to keep their NCAA hopes alive. Eight point lead, Pittsburgh. Green to Gaze for three. Got it! Five point game, and a timeout taken by Seton Hall with 40 seconds to play, and the Pirates hang tough. Andrew Gaze, who has hit 63 three-pointers this year, and he can do it along with Nick Katsikis and John Morton. Yeah, but I just think the problem that Seton Hall has had in the second half is that Gaze was non-existent. I've seen Gaze play half a dozen times this season. This, this has been his weakest game as far as being a factor. He's usually a factor either offensively or defensively, but uh, this evening he really hasn't done a whole lot, although you might call that three-pointer a little something. Boy, from downtown. When he shoots his threes, he shoots it from way out. So Gaze, the Australian, 16 points in the game. And he's hit four for five from three-point land. Pittsburgh keeps on coming down. They've made, uh, just at a quick count, six free throws in a row. Four by Brooklyn and a couple by Brian Shorter. So the problem playing Pittsburgh down the stretch, their great free throw shooting, particularly Sean Miller and Jason Matthews. It's a gut wrencher at Fitzgerald. Maybe you want to foul Bobby Martin, who's out there now. He might be the most logical guy, but you need to get a steal. You need to get a five-second call. Foul called quickly. Bobby Martin was hacked by Ramon Ramos. See, Number four on him. The people in the stands always want an intentional foul in that situation. I don't think the refs want to call that. I, I hate to see it called. I, I saw a game on television earlier today that uh, the game was just settled on an intentional foul that just should not have been called. It was a St. John's game, matter of fact. I didn't think they should have called an intentional foul late in that game, and you hate to see that disrupt the whole game. 39 seconds to play. Bobby Martin at the free throw line, one and one. He hits the first. Pittsburgh, 77. Seton Hall, 71. 39 seconds left in the game. Bobby Martin, a 63% free throw shooter. Conley hits the second. Eight free throws in a row for Pittsburgh now, and they're all going to the line and making them. Gerald Green for Seton Hall. We have a foul called away from the ball. Rod Brookett tangled up with Andrew Gaze, and the foul is called against Brookett of Pittsburgh, who puts Gaze on the line for one and one. Not something Paul Evans wanted. No, Brooklyn was pretty upset before because Gaze took a swing at him, a, a swing in the, all in the context of the game, trying to commit a foul. Uh, the official didn't call it, but Brooklyn felt it. But Gaze has hurt his left hand on that little altercation there. As much as he's a right-handed shooter, you need that left hand to shoot the ball to, to guide it. 34 seconds to play. Pittsburgh 78, Seton Hall 71. Seton Hall has to shoot free throws, but they also have to play defense. Andrew Gage, 71% free throw shooter, 16 points in the game. He nails the first. Seton Hall hangs tough. They've been playing the foul game now for the last minute and a half, and there's still time on the clock, 34 seconds. Five-point game, 78-73. Darrell Walker checks in. Replacing Gaze, Carlesimo upset at the scorer's table for not allowing the substitution more quickly. Miller in trouble, 
and he gets the timeout. So Pittsburgh spends one of their two remaining timeouts. Coach Carlissimo more than a little upset at the scorer's table. Because right before that second free throw went through, he went over to Timmy Higgins and says, Timmy, I want a sub after the bake. Oh, the ball goes through, and they don't, the buzzer doesn't go off. Nobody gets him in the game, and he's pretty upset with the scorer's table. And you, you can't be bothered with that. You have to just play at this point in time. So 34 seconds to play. Pittsburgh by five. Well, what do, you, what do you look for down the stretch now? Well, this scene Hall has to play real good defense now. They can't. They have to try to prevent uh, the Panthers from getting the ball in bounds. Okay, if they get the ball in bounds, again, they have to go back to fouling. And at some point in time, I guarantee you Pittsburgh will miss a free throw. And uh, Seton Hall has to hope that it's going to happen now. Five points is not insurmountable, but they really need to play good defense and, and face guard everybody all over the court and try not to let them inbound at whatsoever. John Miller will play it in. They're playing on the ball, too. There's no free safety here. Look for Jason Matthews to go to length, because he can really run on Katsikas. Jason Matthews with the ball, guarded by Katsikas. And a foul call on Katsikas. And now Jason Matthews, a 90% free throw shooter, in the top 15 in the nation, will go to the line for one and one. They've tried so hard not to foul Sean Miller and Jason Matthews, but all the other guys they have fouled have been making them. So maybe Matthews will be out of character here and he'll miss one. Pittsburgh 24 for 26 from the line in the game. They are a 73% free throw shooting team on the year. Seen Hall not doing too bad, 18 and 19. <laughs> no, not we, bad. We said early, these two teams can shoot fouls. Look at the confidence. Jason Matthews, I've talked with Larry Elbaugh. <laughs> and that will be all for Ramos. So it's looking good for the Panthers, who are looking for their 14th win of the year. And still alive for an NCAA tournament bid. They hope to approve to seven and six in the league and look for the season sweep over the Pirates of Seton Hall. When you talk about, you know, who have you beaten? Like I was saying earlier, Pittsburgh has some great wins on their side of the dock. And I mean, now they've beaten four top 10 teams. Well, now they've beaten number 11. So five teams in the top 11 they've beaten this season. How many teams in the country can say that? And, and their record is only 14 and 10. But I think this team with 16, 17, 17 wins for sure should make the NCAA field. Well, they're not 14 and 10 yet. As you look at Ramon Ramos, who had another superb game for the Pirates of Seton Hall. Yeah, Ramos is really playing well for PJ. Past couple of ball games, really putting some big numbers up. Ramos finishes the game tonight with 25. Here's Brooken, one and one, misses the front end, rebound Cooper. Seton Hall down by seven, still a shot. Morton for three, he hits it, and a foul is called. It is down to four, and Morton will go to the line, chance for a four-point play, 10 seconds on the clock. You make him miss this on purpose? No. No, absolutely. Absolutely not, because what you want to do here is make the free throw. The clock is stopped. I mean, all the confidence in the world. Morton went up in nothing but cotton. Make the free throw and then play defense. Don't pr don't let them get the ball in bounds with 10 seconds to go with a three-point shot. You still have a chance to tie this game if he makes the free throw. I was just checking you. John Morton, 15 points, three for four from the line. He does try to miss it. It did not hit the rim. No. Now we have a violation. Well, no, the violation was the ball didn't hit. The ball has to hit the rim. So it's Pittsburgh ball with right. 10 seconds to play. He hit the backboard, no rim. He couldn't have missed that ball on purpose. Miller in trouble. Ball goes out of bounds. Whose ball is it? No, they Pittsburgh. Can't Pittsburgh. Almost a break for the Pirates. Nine seconds to play. We have to ask PJ after the game if he missed that one on purpose. I would think so. I mean, he doesn't miss a shot like that. Here's the inbound pass to Shorter. Races up court. Lays it in. 82-76. Five seconds to play. Morton fires for three, and that is it. So the Panthers of Pittsburgh win it 82-76. to They sweep the season series. With the Seton Hall Pirates, they improve to 14 and 10, and Seton Hall drops to 21 and 5.
Tremendous second half performance defensively by the Pitt Panthers. And our Plymouth player of the game, well, there were a lot of possibilities tonight. Jason Matthews is the winner. Matthews with a superb effort. And he ends up with 22 points and three steals. Then he hit the big free throws when he had to down the stretch. Great all-around game by Jason Matthews. Again, playing in front of his parents from L.A. Great ball game, big win for the Panthers. That's it for Fitzgerald Fieldhouse. For Whitey Rigsby, I'm Bruce Beck. Thanks for joining us once again. The final score, Pittsburgh 82, Seton Hall 76. The proceeding has been a Big East Conference Television Network production. Due to extended coverage of